Hey, this is Sarah. Um, sorry if this shot is different from some of the next shots you see me edit because I had to refilm it because my SD card did something weird. Um, this is my, a list of my favorite books shot in my wonderful, wonderful uh, library closet full of books here you can see. Um, uh, I don't really have the time. Right here is my Harry Potter shelf. Um, get some old Harry Potter books, the new ones. It's really nice. Basically, I'm going to introduce uh, three or four books that I really, really love and the reasons why I do. And the first one of these is Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut, which is one of my favorites because I've been a time travel nerd since the beginning. I, I watched Back to the Future multiple times. I can quote it and everything. I just love it so much. And this book is uh, narrated by someone who's supposed to be Kurt Vonnegut about a a man named Billy Pilgrim who can become unstuck in time, which means he jumps around in his life and lives his life in a non-linear way, which is really, really interesting to read. It involves, you know, aliens and all this crazy stuff that, um, that I, I just really, I love it so much. Um, just the way he writes, the Kurt Vonnegut's books are really good. I haven't read a lot of them because I haven't had the time or the chance, but um, as soon as I get to, I will definitely read Finish Cat's Cradle. Anything by him is really good. I'd recommend this one. Thanks. But the second book I'd like to talk about is The Stand by Stephen King, which is 1,440 pages long, which I slogged my way through, I want to say, last year. and. It's one of the scariest books I've ever read, honestly. Like, my dad, he read it, and he couldn't sleep with the lights off. Um, basically, it's... If you love classic battles between good and evil with no action, like I do, uh, this is the book for you. And also, if you like a zombie-ish plague story without the whole zombies, then you'll also like this, because... Uh, at the very beginning, a man escapes from a biological testing facility. A man escapes from a biological testing facility and unleashes a huge plague upon America. Don't know what happens to the other countries. Doesn't say. The backstory in some of Stephen King's earlier novels are is not a hundred percent, but uh, the this plague hits the city, turns. America devastated in a short amount of time and there are people that are immune to the disease. They get some symptoms but they don't get sick and they don't die. And these people are the ones that are left. And the ones that are left go on a quest. Um, I wouldn't say a quest but they all go on a journey. There's a good side and there's a bad side and the bad side is called by the evil man named Randall Flagg. The good side is called by an old woman. And that's all I'll have to say. But it is really, really good. The character development, which I am a sucker for, is so good. My favorite characters would have to be, um, if you've read the book, Nick Carraway. Wait, wait, no, that's from The Great Gatsby. Nick something and um, Tom Collins. Tom Collins. I really like Tom Collins. And... I just love this book so much. I can pick it up at any time, open it wherever, and start reading. I love it to death. <laughs> Such a fun puns. Alright. The third book I want to talk about is It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vizzini. And I love this book for several reasons. And it's because it's about a teenager. Teenagers, wow, I'm such a stereotypical teenager with my John Green books and all my angst. Yes, this book was written, uh, published in, what, 2006. And it is the story of a guy named Craig who l checks himself into a mental ward in New York because he's having suicidal thoughts. And there are several amazing things about this book. It's the fact that the character of Craig um, portrays a lot of, I think, the teenage angst and struggle that I would say where they have a normal life and they're very well off, but still they feel sad and they don't know why and the parents are not understanding in parent fashion and so on and so forth. Uh, his experience in the mental ward is closely based upon uh, Ned Vizzini's experience in mental hospitals because he had been severely depressed before and um, Sadly, seven years after the book had been published, Ned Vizzini committed suicide on December 13th, I believe. If that's wrong, I will edit it in post. But 
this is a really, really great book by him, and I would recommend anyone read it if you want to learn about, not learn, but just hear, hear the real narrative tale of someone living with depression, and he's a normal kid who feels guilty for having it, and has a normal life, but it's kind of a funny story. So, it's the third one. Oh, how many of these am I going to have? Uh, this is the last one I'm going to do because it's kind of short and it doesn't have a plot. This is 22 and 50 Poems by E. e. Cummings and it is a compilation of his poems. And E. Cummings is my favorite poet because... Look at, look at this. Look at, look at this. Look at this writing. It's so, it's so creative and I, I really, I really love it, honestly. Um, my favorite poem by him... Yeah, it does not have a title, I don't believe, but it's, the first line is, love is the every only God, and I, I rehearsed this poem, I believe, for in seventh grade, it was Poem in Your Pocket Day, and I brought this, and I said it to my librarian, and got some sort of candy or something, but, um, he's, he's my favorite poet, I've tried, I've tried hard to be E.E. E. Cummings sometimes, and it really does not work, I gotta tell you, it's hard, but, I'm still trying, and he's one of my favorite poems. Poems. Yes, he's a poem. He's a poet. Um, so that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching my video. I hope you guys will check out the books I've named, which again are 22 and 50 Poems by E.E. E. Cummings, It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vizzini, The Stand by Stephen King, and Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse-Five. Um, thanks for watching. I already said that, didn't I? I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.